88 films. 88. Thank you guys yeah, for much. sending us this movie. Galaxy of Terror. Galaxy of Terror, uh, the third movie which 88 uh, films sent us. You can see the lovely artwork in front. Uh, nice. Yes. Lovely artwork. It's uh, with a reversible sleeve. But let's uh, oh, go back. Just, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I'm just saying that inside the sleeve it says uh, your countdown to hell is about to begin. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Really nice there. Yeah. So. I'm going to read uh, the special features of uh, the Blu-ray, uh, which are a new 4K scan of the original film elements, original LPCM2 soundtrack, uh, optional English ASDH uh, subtitles, audio commentary with uh, Taf O'Connell, Alan Napone, Alec Gillis and uh, David De Cotu. Oh, yeah, the yeah. cocktail. Yeah. Cocktail. Tales from the Lumber Yard, uh, the making of Galaxy of Terror, a seven part documentary uh, featuring uh, interviews with producer Roger Corman, director, co writer Bruce D. Clark, co writer Mark Siegel, uh, and uh, actors Robert England, Sid Haig, and Taffy O'Connell. Uh, making of Maggie, which is the maggot, uh, which I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> yeah. An interview with Alan Upon, original trailer, mind rap trailer, because there was a, another name of the movie until it came out. It was called also Mind Rap. Yeah. Uh, so when it was called Mind Rap, uh, there is also a trailer. Uh, TV spots, uh, still gallery, which is kind in a, in a video. Like a slideshow. Yeah, sort of like a slideshow. Yeah. In a, video format so you can pause it and uh, watch the shots a reversible sleeve with uh, featuring alternative poster art which is inside and uh, john if you can yeah show the poster uh-huh. yeah this is how the uh, blu-ray looks like it's 18 and plus uh, yeah so that's the one side of it which yeah. is just the same as it is on the slip case there yeah And that looks a bit mad, uh, just, just to say some words about uh, the poster. The poster, uh, the creatures on the poster uh, doesn't have nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. much. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's how they decided to make it. Yeah. And uh, I think because it was all about lure and you win. Oh yeah, exactly. They didn't care if you were pissed off at the end, realizing yeah. that you're just being tricked. Yeah. <laughs> Once they got you in the door, they oh, got yeah. the money. Exactly. <laughs> And that's the other half of the thing there, look. Yeah. The giant cat. Yeah. Very, very, very good artwork, amazing. Uh, and also it's enhanced because uh, it's also a part of uh, the old uh, trailers, good. those uh, shots and... Uh, But you can just imagine going into a cinema in the 80s and saying that. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, exactly. Like that. Yeah. Very, uh, very effective. This is very sentimental, you know. This is more garish, something. this is more like 42nd yeah. Street in New York with the old uh, CZ yeah. cinemas. We had all the peep shows, this is all the artwork you'd see in that. And then this would be a bit for the more upmarket cinemas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Galaxy of Terror, uh, it also is known by uh, another name, another two names actually. Uh, so at one point, It was about to be called Quest, then Planet of Horror and uh, Mind Rap and Infinity of Terror. So the movie came off uh, a lot of renaming, you know. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of interesting things about the movie, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. I'm just gonna uh, sc- uh, check from the other side. Yeah, so It is uh, five, uh, five rating in IMDb. It's one hour and 21 minutes action adventure horror. Uh, with uh, as I was reading earlier, the, the, the director is Bruce Clark. Uh, the the movie is uh, 16 by 9 format. Okay. And. Uh, 
it's similar to Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, it was influenced by uh, these uh, movies, you can see the influence there, uh, but with added horror elements. Yeah. It's kind of... And gore and yeah. guts and all that. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of gore. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like Evil Dead, you know. But that was the thing though, those sort of films, that's what people wanted. That sold, yeah. horror still sells. So that's yeah. what drew the crowds in. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, at that time, life is, was boring, you know. Yeah. Nothing was happening in the 70s, yeah. you know. So people wanted to Business. see a film yeah. Yeah. Some, if it had blood, yeah. tits, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that, they were yeah. like, that's all I need to know, man. Let's go. Get my ticket. Yeah. So yeah. The synopsis is about a crew of a spaceship flying uh, to an unknown planet where they find a pyramid with strange creatures. You know? Yeah. And uh, there are those creatures, like uh, there is this uh, giant worm uh, and kind of uh, alien creatures also uh, with uh, tentacles uh, trapped in a pyramid for million years, you know. They're there, so they're entering this pyramid. Uh, by the way, talking about this pyramid, just to say, man, there was one scene which fascinated me, man. And I'm, uh, later on, I'm gonna, you're gonna understand why. why. Yeah. And who, who, whose uh, fault was it? <laughs> uh, because we're gonna talk about that. But this scene was when uh, they are climbing this hill, the whole crew, you know, because yeah. in the beginning the crew is whole. Yeah. And they're climbing the hill. And little by little, uh, there is this pyramid which is revealing, you know, in front of you. Yeah. You know, but they did it in the old times, you know, mechanically everything. Yeah. So it was like very theatrical because at that point uh, they didn't have uh, those effects, you know. Uh, like uh, to put something on the green screen yeah, exactly. so they had to pull another screen with a pyramid in front of the shooting you know yeah. the, in the studio so they're put, pulling this screen uh, which uh, on it is uh, painted the pyramid yeah. but man the way they did it Very oh effective. my god oh my god but that's they had to be that yeah. creative I yeah. mean, you see a lot of films like that, um, even in Star Wars, a lot of the backgrounds are matte. Like, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example, when um, Vader comes into the uh, Death Star, I think it's in the first Star Wars, and yeah. you see all the soldiers, uh, it has a zoomed out look, and they're all lined up. That's a yeah. matte painting, they're not even there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Very clever the way they did it back yeah. then. Yeah, but this scene was very effective. Man. Yeah? Yeah, when they're looking so... They, uh, I'm not gonna talk about uh, what happens a lot, but I'll just say that uh, they crashed on this uh, on this uh, planet. Yeah, it's kind of like alien. Uh, yeah. Both, oh yeah, it, it's interesting to see how they um, they did it back then. You know? Yeah, how how they painted all this uh, because man, the way they uh, painted it, the way they used uh, like lighting, yeah. so as to make it. Uh, a bit dark, a bit mystical, a bit um, kind of scary. The way they made it, man, it was amazing. Yeah. That was getting people like, you would have to get someone who was a really good matte artist. Oh, yeah. And at the top of their game. And they would, because, yeah, it, was, it wasn't as expensive as CGI because yeah. you didn't have CGI. So. Oh, yeah. But like you said, yeah. it was very effective. Do you know what oh, I mean? yeah, it was. And I, I actually, I'll tell you what, I actually prefer that. I prefer matte paintings and stuff like yeah. that to CGI. For me, it, it, it's a lot more moody and it sets the mood a lot better, I think. Yeah. So, just to come back to the movie, yeah, correct. I agree completely with you, you know. Yeah. And uh, this type of um, shooting a movie is kind of more appealing to me and for the eyes also because there is not, uh, because in CGI there is uh, a lot of uh, like scenes which are shot. Uh, on very high uh, frame rate, so as after they try to compress it and uh, yeah. choose how to show, what to show, because the human eye cannot see 200 uh, frames per second, you know, yeah, yeah. like in real time. So um, they have to, to present you the, the best angles so as the human eye not to get tired. Because yeah. if you, if you, It's like uh, going uh, on a roller coaster, man. Yeah. At one point you come down the ro roller coaster and you're tired, you know. Yeah. Your eyes are tired, you're kind of psychologically drained. It's yeah. the same thing in yeah, movie making. Yeah, you know? track of everything. Yeah. And uh, this, how they were making it, was better. 
because there was not those uh, quick motion shots which they do quite uh, in a lot of yeah. Marvel movies, for example, like during the fight yeah, scene, when you superhero you don't know who's slap and who, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, especially when there is a lot of uh, extras and uh, the protagonist is running around, you can't follow who is doing what. You know, yeah. you, you you get lost yeah. and you don't know where you are. And uh, you, you you kind of get frustrated in watching the, yeah. the scene. But uh, at that time they were doing it in a different way. And I think the old way was the old cinema shooting was kind of more more better in a way, you know. Mate, you're not wrong, and I I'll tell you why, because just as you were saying about how they filmed it, um there's a Robin Hood movie from the nineteen thirties. Yeah. Where where Errol Flynn and he was Errol Flynn was uh an expert sword fighter, yeah, like fencing, yeah, yeah, and he's fighting the sheriff who's played by Basil Rathbone, who yeah. also was an expert fencer. And there's a bit in it that's been copied millions of times by other films now, where so they have like the sword fight yeah. going down the stairs, yeah, and then they kind of go off screen and the camera stays where it is, and you're looking at their shadows fighting, yeah, and they're off screen, and then they come back on screen doing the sword fight but for that moment you're looking at the shadows and this was the 1930s mate can you imagine and it's so so good it's so effective and films have been copying it since forever because it was that it, it sticks in your mind yeah. that's the sort of filmmaking they need to get back to mate yeah exactly but um, yeah they were doing it in a better way it was more mechanical more without CGI but it was very effective yeah and uh, there is a lot of blood, a uh, lot of horrific deaths, you know, when exploring the pyramid, uh, the crew, uh, one of the crew dies in a horrible way, uh, another one uh, gets his hand cut and then his hand starts to move and uh, kills him, you know, yeah. uh, with some crystals, but I'm not going to talk about this, you <laughs> yeah. can uh, watch it. Um, another crew, crew uh, uh, another uh, member of the crew gets raped. By one of the creatures, man. Oh my god! And this is this is oh my god, man. Oh my god, exactly. I said, how can they do that? You know? Yeah. How can they uh, film that? Yeah. But it's it's too well uh, shot, you know. Yeah. It's kind of the angles are good, and then they cut it because they couldn't pass the movie uh, in the USA, so yeah. they had to go one time. Then uh, they cut it and. Um, then they came back, they spoke with the studio, the studio said, uh, listen, uh, you need to make it more appealing so as to lure the viewer. Uh, so they um, added some stuff uh, which was okay, but then when they went to rate it, uh, they didn't rate it again because yeah. they said it's the sounds which uh, the woman is making yeah. are kind of... Um, uh, too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they had to re- uh, to render it again, yeah. to cut it again, and uh, it went through a lot of stages until the movie came out, you know. Yeah. And uh, but I'm 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 leaving uh, to talk about the the most important thing of the movie at the end. But uh, listen to this. Uh, so I'm just talking about the crew now. Yeah. Uh, they have these nice suits. And I was uh, thinking and looking about the, everything, you know, the whole the whole movie, and I was thinking, wow, this movie, how they made it at that time, you know, it's so uh, visionary, you know, but you'll see why. So, um, it was interesting also the backpack, uh, it had uh, these backpacks of the crews, they had two hooks, so they hooked them at the back, and on top of it there are these uh, floodlights, uh, between the shoulders, you know, so the um, when they shoot, it's very dark. Uh, but uh, the crew goes with these uh, floodlights, and uh, the um, it's very futuristic, by yeah, the way. Yeah. The whole um, you know backpack, the yeah. way now they do the same uh, way uh, some uh, backpacks, you know, yes, like yeah. uh, like push bikes backpacks. Yeah, yeah. They do them with the same shape, and I'm sure that these companies took ideas with. Uh, from this movie, Honestly, yeah, yeah, and uh, but uh, man, um, it's very interesting. Interesting uh, how um, the end of the movie was, you know. But it's the viewer to decide to decode it, you know. Yeah, because at one point, um, 
the whole crew got confused. Uh, they little by little started dying one by one yeah. uh, in different uh, horrific ways, uh, as I said earlier. And um, they, they they just wanted to show you that this pyramid is messing with their mind. Yeah. Um, they started to see their fears. Uh, at one point, uh, their fears started to kill. Yeah, so, yeah, to be manifested, and uh, it was very, very confusing. Yeah. The end of the movie, you know. But what do you expect when James Cameron is assistant director ah. of Galaxy of Terror? Can yeah, you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Terminator. Can you imagine? And uh, Avatar yeah. and stuff. So there is this interview with uh, Alan Apone, which is the makeup artist of Iron Man One and Two, also. And uh, he speaks there about uh, how he was uh, collaborating with uh, James Cameron, which they were calling Jim at that time for some reason. Uh, he's also a second unit director, James Cameron, in this movie. And all the dead scenes are uh, shot by him. Ah, yes. And then he went on so the this was the, the cherry on the pie, which I started to. Yeah, because that's when he was really started. Because he did, um, he did the second Piranha movie. Yeah, and that was, I think, that was his first proper directing. Also, the scene when uh, one of the crew gets his arm cut, and later his arm is uh, full of maggots. You know, there is uh, these maggots around, yeah. and when they were shooting it, the maggots were not moving, so they were just still there sleeping. You know, on the prosthetic. Yeah, and he came with the idea. James Cameron came with the idea to electroshock the maggots. So they can start moving, you know. That's can you imagine? How clever is that? Oh my god, man. And the scene is amazing. This prosthetic and, you know, it's very well done, you know. Yeah. And you can see this uh, hand and the maggots on top, like kind of moving, really moving, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say, wow. And when you know uh, what is the reason, yeah, you, know, yeah. you appreciate it more. Because then I started, I said, oh, let me rewatch this. So I started the movie again. I went to this part with the maggots and I started watching it. You know, it's really good how he came with this idea. Yeah, man. yeah. James Cameron and James Cameron, what yeah. to say, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he contacted uh, Alan Apone, he gave him the drawings. Uh, Alan Apone is the makeup artist, as I said, of um, movies like Iron Man 1 and 2 um, and other Marvel movies. Uh, so he, he gave him the drawings, he gave him the dimension of uh, Maggie the maggot. Which yeah. is called Maggie, they call it Maggie. <laughs> yeah. And um, so James Cameron designed it. Yeah. And he, he gave the Alan upon the, the drawing so he can uh, make the model. And Alan upon was the one which um, was inside the worm, you know, yeah. the maggot. Uh, controlling from inside the, the maggot. Yes, yeah. And also from outside with the crane and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. But uh, it was interesting because there was an interview also on the Blu-ray and he was talking about this uh, maggot, how uh, the flooring couldn't support it and at one point it collapsed and uh, so the girl which was uh, naked and uh, below the maggot, yeah. excuse me, which was uh, supposed to be raped, yeah. uh, she, she was kind of in danger in a way. Yeah. But um, then I watched uh, another interview with her and uh, it wasn't. It wasn't the case, so she said it's it's fine. Yeah. And by the way, she kept uh, very well. She's very well looking nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even though that she's not uh, as young as she was, but uh, yeah, he was controlling this maggot uh, from inside, and the flooring uh, collapsed, so everything fell down. And uh, they had these uh, misfortunes in making the movie. Uh, but my favorite part of the movie is the scene when the crew and the spaceship uh, explore and climb this pyramid, man, as I said you know, yeah. earlier. Because um, it is very memorable uh, and very well shot. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of, when I think of this movie straight away, but I'm sure that James Cameron has a finger in this, in this scene. Yeah. Know? And uh, the way he. Uh, because he was also the uh, second director. Yeah, he's very inventive. Uh, second unit uh, director. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's very he, he has very advanced uh, thinking and uh, the way he's, uh, uh, he's uh, light years uh, in front of his time, you know. Yeah. Uh, at that time, you know, he was uh, coming up with ideas which 
uh, you know, he's now shooting the uh, avatars, yeah. the five avatars, which we, we can't wait uh, at the end of the year, we're gonna start watching them. A little by little, every two years, we're gonna have some seats of uh, his uh, uh, beautiful uh, ideas. And uh, yeah, so I'm just checking my notes here. Uh, the Blu-ray menus, very stylish. Man. Yeah. With this uh, Sky-Fi element in them, uh, it's it's a good, very good movie, very good movie. Recommended, uh, guys. Uh, the movie is interesting, and uh, James Cameron is also. Uh, taking part in this uh, movie, so uh, he's uh, uh, he's uh, he, he shot all the dead scenes. So um, it is good to know uh, how they were doing it when there was no uh, special effects. Yeah. As nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And when everything is so easy. Yeah, you know? to be very creative now. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. This was uh, 88 films, yeah. and uh, the third movie which we got from them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys uh, from 88 for sending us all these three uh, movies, the Chinese Boxer, Galaxy of Terror, and the Black Cat. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Lovely, lovely movies with uh, beautiful content, uh, like uh, also inside the Blu-rays, all these uh, posters which uh, each uh, uh, Blu-ray has and uh, the print is uh, such on a high level. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And, yeah. Nice.